Hello and welcome to watching NDTV 24-7. I am Vedant Agarwal and our top story, well, NDTV's big decoding G20 conclave in the national capital is uh, making it to all headlines. How has India shaped the G20 and how has the G20 presidency shaped India's global future? Well, these are the highlights of our big conclave that brought together the biggest names behind India's G20 success, top ministers, business bigwigs and policy experts on one stage. What Prime Minister Modi has done is earned the trust for India from the rest of the world. And that trust is certainly the defining factor of our G20 presidency. What is behind the government's logic of imposing protectionist duties, whether it's on laptop curbs and export duties on onions? I think it's a matter of perspective, whether it's uh, protectionist duties or they are fair and uh, equitable trade practices. And I think our curbs, as many other countries around the world have brought it, have been more security related. Mm -hmm. India certainly is not a protectionist country, but India respects that there have to be transparent rules of trade. Gaganyan is the next big ambition for, for India. They will be astronauts. Will we have eventually, or perhaps even in the start, a woman astronaut. So now we are planning the first trial mission, uh, which will possibly happen around uh, first or second week of October. We thought we could do it in September, but now September we'll have Aditya and then October first week. In the second trial, we'll have uh, not a soulful human being, but a human being in the form of a robo, and that will be a female robo. After every launch, they pay an obeisance at Tirupati, yes. as you rightly said. And immediately after the launch, you know how the celebration is is by distributing a laddu, the right. Tirupati laddu to each one of them. So I think it's the, it's the, it's the ideal blend of India's uh, traditional heritage and the most updated modern Indian technology for which our scientists are known. We took it to the people of India and every single citizen of India was involved in G20 in some manner or the other. In 2047, India will be providing close to 28 to 30 percent of the skilled manpower to the world. There will be Indian general managers in five-star hotels, there will be Indian electricians, Indian plum, all over the world. Indians will be capturing the world. I think the fuel of the future really is green hydrogen. ये मान के चलिए फॉसिल फ्यूल तो इतना सा जितना भी है आज से 10 15 20 साल के बाद पीपल विल जस्ट नॉट वांट टू यूज इट व्हाई बिकॉज़ अल्टरनेट्स विल बी अवेलेबल इंडियाज फ्यूल कंजम्पशन टुडे ऑन एन एवरेज इज थ्री टाइम्स द ग्लोबल एवरेज Coming to some policy decisions that the center had taken in terms of the ban on laptops uh, from outside and, and you know, the, it's been deferred. What's the intention behind the move? There seems to be still lack of clarity in terms of communication and a lot of concerns raised by manufacturing <coughs> giants. So there is no ban. So first of all, I just want to be, be very clear up front. There is no ban. There is no licensing. There is no license Raj. Uh, unfortunately, I think the communication of what we did wasn't... Uh, the, the best and the most perfect. For misinformation is unfortunately today one of the biggest harms and challenges for all democratic societies. We believe AI is a force for good. Uh, we have uh, publicly said as a government that uh, uh, AI is a kinetic enabler of our digital economy and we have a goal of a trillion dollar digital economy and AI will be a significant part of that. Now having said that, like I said, you, if you marry misinformation and the threat of misinformation and the power of AI to take misinformation to another level altogether. Uh, today my capacity, non-fossil fuel capacity is 43% in capacity terms, 43%. And that's why in Glasgow we uh, upped our ambition and said that by 2030 uh, we will have 50% of our capacity coming from non-fossil fuel sources. And believe you me, I mean I'm very close I'll be very close to achieving that give a year or so. And by 2030, I will have 65% of my capacity coming from non-fossil fuel uh, sources. Emissions intensity we have reduced. We had pledged 
that by 2030, we will reduce our emissions intensity by 33%, despite the fact that our emissions intensity, as I said, per capita emissions are one of the lowest in the world. And we achieved that in 2022. My sense was because I tried to move around as much as possible in Srinagar uh, myself. I went on the Jhelum uh, walk, I went on the Dal, we went to various parts of uh, Srinagar. And I also talked to people across the board. And what I found was that people said, look, we've never had this sort of international event. People were supportive of that G20 process. And the one thing we heard from a lot of people was, please do more of these international events. We need this sort of attention. And today, I think we will have completed 200 meetings in about 60 cities. I mean, by the time we finish our presidency, we would have completed that record. 60 cities of India have hosted G20 meetings. I think no other country in the G20 has even come close to that record. People that have access to a cell digitally connected is just amazing. I just saw uh, the other day uh, on TV a grandmother, I think it was the state of Assam, sitting there with her cell and wiring money to the grandchildren yeah. on her own cell. Where else is that happening? And if India is 1.4 billion people digitally connected, and there are 4 billion people not digitally connected, you can just think uh, of 7 billion people. You have a huge, huge advantage. So there's a huge flow. Now that's an old flow as well, and you can see that by the inhabitants of number 10 Downing Street. I mean, did you ever imagine <laughs> that you would see uh, the uh, person who lives in number 10 Downing Street on the India's national day, the 15th of August, in one of the greatest and oldest universities of the world, saying Jai Shri Ram. So India's big pitch there is the leader of the G20, but this as the world also watches India's moon mission. And the Prime Minister also met scientists of uh, ISRO. Uh, immediately after he returned from Greece, he went to the ISRO Centre in Bengaluru and he addressed the scientists there as well. Uh, he broke down, uh, he was very emotional and he also saluted India's Chandrayaan-3 team. And in a significant announcement, he also said that August the 23rd, when the Chandrayaan-3 rover actually landed on the lunar surface, will be known as a National Space Day. And that point, that spot in the uh, on the moon uh, where uh, the Chandrayaan-3 landed will be known as Shiv Shakti and where Chandrayaan Chandrayaan 2 actually left its footprint will be known as a Tiranga point. And we're moving now to the horrific Muzaffar Nagar case. Now an FIR has been registered against a teacher for allegedly getting students in a class to slap their classmates who was a Muslim boy. Uh, well, in a classroom in Uttar Pradesh's Muzaffar uh, district is where this humiliation happened. And after the video went viral, the police have now taken action on the complaint of the child's father, who was reluctant to file a complaint earlier. And across party lines, this incident has been condemned. And uh, the teacher is unrepentant and she's not been called for questioning, even though NFIR has now been registered. And moving now to our special focus, well, NDTV's team of reporters have now unearthed the alleged cover-up in the Rolls-Royce case. Uh, well, uh, the big question now is that uh, whether uh, industrialist Vikas Malu is being shielded or not. So, well, the Rolls-Royce and petrol tanker collision is being covered up, uh, covered up allegedly, particularly after the CCTV has been uh, released. So, well, the Rolls-Royce was doing... 230 kilometers per hour. The tanker driver and cleaner have been killed in this head-on collision. The police earlier claimed that the tanker was on the wrong side of the road, but the CCTV footage has contradicted this claim. The CCTV footage has shown that Rolls-Royce hit the tanker from behind and that uh, the tanker was on the right side of the road. Uh, the Rolls-Royce uh, hit the tanker at a speed of over 200 kilometers per hour and even the eyewitnesses have said that the Kuber Group chief, Vikas Malu, was in the car. Uh, the Millionaire was in the car, but he has not been named in that FIR. In fact, no passenger of the Rolls Royce car has been named in that particular FIR. And the owner of the Kuber Group has also not been 
call for questioning. In fact, the new SP had also confirmed to NDTV that Vikas Malu was undergoing treatment at the Medanta Hospital in Guru Gram. So the big question is whether he is being protected by the police or not. This is because, uh, well, of course, he uh, enjoys massive clout and is somebody who has been earlier uh, also associated with that high profile Satish Kaushik death case, even though the police ruled out foul player later. We will take a quick break now. News continues on the other side. Welcome back. Let's get to news from Assam where the state government has decided to seek legal opinion and is contemplating to move the Supreme Court after last Thursday's significant verdict by the Guwahati High Court acquitting all six convicts in the 2004 bomb blast in Assam's Dhemaji which killed 18 people including 13 school children. Here's a report. Uh, I have asked DGP to study the uh, verdict of Guwahati High Court. If we feel then uh, if we get legal advice, then we will appeal before Supreme Court. But the Assam government's next plan after last Thursday's significant verdict from the Guwahati High Court in the 2004 bomb blast case. The blast during Independence Day celebrations in Dhemaji killed 18, of which 13 were children. Years later, the banned outfit Ulfa had owned up responsibility for the remote-controlled IED blast. The High Court in its order categorically stated that the prosecution was not able to prove the guilt with respect to the charges framed beyond reasonable doubt and therefore the accused have been acquitted with benefit of doubt. The court has given acquitted because of uh, lack in the proper investigation or due to the fault in the uh, faulty investigation. But if you make mistake in the elementary procedure in the investigation or uh, process, the court has no other option but to grant them bail. Secondly, you imagine. 10 children have lost their life and it is almost now say 19 years when the incident has occurred. Even though its cadre has been acquitted, the faction of Ulfa in peace talks with the center says they are equally pained. So now I am very sad that the child who was killed in the hospital, I am very sad. We pass condolences to the family and we pray there needed some proof. Sir, जो investigating officer था, वो investigation officer ने तो अच्छा से ये लोग proof वो लोग देना नहीं सका। in Dhemaji, there is disappointment. Amar Nyalo brought at a hassle, the Telge Zi Hol Bioti at Egusoto Joito Asil, Timulke Duki, Hibosto Hobo, Timulu Sonialo, Distitu, Timulke, Salonit, Timulke Duki was to Hobo, looking to Dubai Gobohoto, Timulke Azizuri Kalas, Lap Puise, Bakalas, Paise, Dwami Otinto, Dukito Hizu. Iman Bosa Opeha Koibini, Iman Bosa Opeha Koibini, the now all eyes are on the Assam government's next move. Will the Dhemaji victims get justice ever? With camera person Shanjay Chakraborty and Ratnadeep Chaudhary in Guwahati and NDTV Bureau Report.